In this video, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of the infamous S Voice app that releases with the Samsung Galaxy S3. However, you'll notice I'm actually running a Samsung Galaxy S2 LTE, and the reason that's possible is because on XDA forums, the app was leaked and it can run on any ice cream sandwich device, whether you're rooted or not rooted. And I'll show an instructional video uh, link on that at the ending of this video. However, it's not guaranteed to work for you, so don't get your hopes up. Uh, furthermore, please do not start a flame war over which is better, Siri or S Voice. The fact remains that Vlingo was released on the Google Play Store at least three years ago, possibly even longer, and they designed S Voice. <clears throat> so Siri isn't that original, but the fact remains that if you like an iPhone, get an iPhone device. If you like Android, get an Android device. Whatever makes you happy, but keep the comment section clean, alright? And what I'm going to do is actually give you my thoughts <coughs> of comparison from S Voice to Vlingo and Vlingo Labs later on. But let's get into the demonstration first. <clears throat> How is the weather in Toronto today? <clears throat> Hi Galaxy. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. Hi Galaxy. Do you think I'm cool? I like you for you. Oh, that's nice. Let's try something a bit more practical though. Hi Galaxy. Open Sound Hound. So as you can see, it's really quick and responsive at opening up apps, which is a great feature. Let's try something a bit more uh, difficult. I always find that virtual assistant apps, people say, oh, this one's better, this one's better. I think that's a little biased, considering that many of the commands are done in English. Well, what happens if you have to do something in a different language or uh, someone with a hard-to-pronounce name to an app that caters mostly to English names? So what I did is I included a couple of fake contacts in my address book and I'm going to try contacting them. Let's see how the app responds, good or bad, to um, a native tongue of Punjabi. So let's try the contact, I think it's Sarjeet I put, let's try that. Call Sarjeet. Your address book has more than one possible match for you that you mean one of the following people. <laughs> Sarjeet. Your address book has more than one possible match for Jay. Did you mean one of the following people? Okay, I'm purposely blocking out my contacts because I don't want you to see them. But as you saw, the name is Sir Jeet, and it flopped completely on that. Let's try one last time. Call Sir Jeet. No match for Jeet. Who would you like to call? <laughs> Cancel. So as you can see, the app was a complete flop when it came to uh, trying to call a Punjabi name. So I'm not sure how it's going to fare to someone with a more African name or, um, let's see, Chinese, whatever your culture may be, your background. It's not that great at doing those type of uh, contacts. So I'm not really too surprised on that, but I'm also slightly disappointed because, well, I'm hoping that technology will go in that direction because, let's face it, uh, it needs to cater to around the world, right? Uh, let's try another contact, another fake contact I put in, which is slightly easier to understand. We'll see how it fares against that. Call Sunny Diol. Your address book has more than one possible match for Santa. Did you meet <laughs> one of the following people? Cancel. So, the problem is, see this name Sarjeet Sandhu, that's the fake contact I was trying to call originally, and now I tried to search it again, so it, yeah, it's got a lot of tinkers and problems to work out. Call Sunny Diol. Calling Sunny Del. Well, it's close enough this time, this time I got it. Okay, so it got the fake contact, uh, the second one, on the second try. Not that great. Um, so it's it's a hit or a miss. Like I said, in English commands and names, it's great, but for something that's you know in different cultures, it's not going to fare too well. 
Okay, I feel like there are a couple important features that I forgot to show you. I want to show them to you right now. Cancel that first. <clears throat> Please repeat your request. Wake up, lazy. There, you saw. I just, um... I didn't catch that. Be quiet. I use a custom wake-up command, uh, which I set to wake up, lazy. And you can actually do that yourself very easily by just going to the settings. S whoops, see Daisy. Set up wake command, press yes, and tap this. Uh, we reset it, tap on that, and then you can speak your commands in here. It'll ask you to repeat it uh, four times just to verify that it got the recording correct. And you can set up other wake up functions to do the following. So it's a great feature, you can set up your own customized message <coughs> with your own voice. Uh, let's show you one more thing which I feel is really important. Map, Harbor Front, Toronto. <clears throat> I didn't want to do directions to Toronto because I didn't want you to see my address, but as you can see, if you can Google map this correctly, it can do turn-by-turn -turn navigation. It would simply open up Google Navigation. So it does a great job of that too. Uh, my quick thoughts on comparison to the regular Vlingo. Vlingo, <clears throat> in car. Hey Vlingo. What would you like to do? What is the weather today? Okay, see, it has to try to leave in-car mode, which to me is pretty weird, considering that there's a hands-free law in Canada, and I believe in the U.S. as well. Let's see how Vingo Labs compares. What is the weather today? Good grief. You have requested something I don't support yet, but please share your thoughts below. Okay, so, <clears throat> as you saw, Vingo Labs is by far the worst of the three uh, Vlingo-designed apps. But in their defense, they have said that <clears throat> this is a public beta app, which means it's in public testing. It's not even near complete at all. It, it, it hardly accepts any of my commands that I've tried. Very basic commands. Vlingo in car uh, within the actual Vlingo app <clears throat> is something I've been using for about three years now, which has been great to me so far. But the problem is, if I have my Bluetooth headset connected, it'll accept commands. <clears throat> excuse me via the speakerphone. So if I'm driving and there's a lot of noise around me, if I'm on the highway, there's a truck driving next to me, all that noise and distortion in the back will be sent to the phone. Whereas if my Bluetooth headset device is connected to S-Voice, I can repeat the commands into the Bluetooth head headset device, making commands a lot more clearer and crisper to understand. I'm not sure why Vlingo doesn't do that with my Bluetooth headset, but S-Voice does a great job of it. Um, so in conclusion, I think this is how it works. Vingo Labs is by far the worst and not even worth using as a day-to-day -day app. However, do help them uh, with development by sending feedback because they are trying to improve it. This is basically the future S-Voice app, but for any Android device on the Google Play Store. They're working on that right now. Vingo is the second best. Great, but you know it's good enough to get the job done just barely, calling, contacts, etc. S-Voice is by far the best for uh, entertainment purposes and simply for practicality and getting um, commands done, which I think is the best app to use while driving. So, like I said, it's S-Voice is great, but not perfect, because it doesn't uh, cater to many cultures, but I believe almost any app is guilty of that, because there are just too many mother tongues and uh, native languages out there. It's just, it's just uh, it might not happen in our lifetime, but it would be a nice feature if technology could do that. Uh, so yeah, if you found this video useful, hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe to my channel or check out my website for technology news and rumors and thanks for watching.